He's Seth Everett, host of Sports with Friends and Hall of Justice, has his own Twitch channel. You can follow Seth on Twitter at Seth underscore Everett. Seth, how are you? Good morning, guys. I'm okay. You know, another day. Is it Wednesday? I, it I, is. I, I lost track. Seth, the only reason you should be able to keep track of the day is that we're going to call you every Wednesday at 8.30. We are your time and date. Right. Just to remind you that right. it's Wednesday, 8.30. That's about all we're good for right now. Seth, right. And, Seth, and the way my life has gone, it's uh, it's three days post-draft. As long as the draft is over, then, that, <laughs> then I'm good. Wow. Then I lost complete track of time. Well, first off, we need a draft every week right now. I mean, I think another sport should have a draft this Thursday. Hell, I think the NHL, if they were smart, they would televise their draft right now because people would watch just for the sake of being able to watch something. Um, Seth, well, they do televise their draft, but they don't have the, their season's not over. And I, I'm in such a different boat than you. And I, 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 it's so weird. I miss sports for my work purposes. My work suffers. You know, the, the, the content, especially when I do sports updates for, for one of my jobs. And, you know, try doing a sports update. Uh, Try doing three minutes in Alabama when there is sports. And, you know, like, those are hard. But at night, I have been inundated. Like, I'm so behind in all the TV shows that I want to watch that if there were games on right now, it would literally further delay my completion of, of some of these shows. And it's been really, really hard. I don't know about you guys. I am swamped. And I don't have a minute to breathe. Because of television shows that you're watching? <laughs> I was going to no, say. No, no, yeah, right. <laughs> no, it, well, okay, let's, let's just say for the sake of the argument, I work a nine-hour day normally, you know, between, between writing and editing audio and then on-air and appearances and things like that. Let's just say it's a nine-hour day. You add three hours of teaching second-grade English, I, I, it is literally, it's a, it's a unique form of, of mind numbing torture it just it, it's it's awful and the feeling that i get because i'm not a teacher and i have such respect for teachers but when my kid is struggling with the answer and i have a show at one o'clock on twitch and it's twelve forty, how i don't just want to give her the answer and i just it's nonsense it, it's nonsense Come on, kid. It's 23. It's 23. 20 plus 20 is 40. Mark plus 3. It's 23. And I could do that, and it's just driving me bananas. Did you hear a little um, Pinella Brett, there? Yeah, it was he. I thought do you it, talk I, to your children I, like I Lou Pinella? Say, how, does, how does Pinella teach math? Always seemingly come out of your mouth. Well, right now, this is my second graders learning money, right? So you got a dime, <laughs> a nickel, oh, boy. two quarters. You got a lot of money there. <laughs> And, uh, you know, Junior, he wanted to stay out and, and, and get a bigger contract. So we had to pay him a lot of quarters and a lot of nickels, but no pennies. Exactly. And, Seth, you know, I guess because my my media work day ends at 9 o'clock and I go into my day as kindergarten going, teacher and house husband. Yes. Um, I've already no, no, but you're 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 doing it straight. You're not getting interrupted. No, I can't reach you at 11 o'clock in the morning. No. Right? Because I've said, I, I've, said to you, I, I've said to you, can we talk at 11 or can we talk at 1? And you can't because you're in school mode. Well, I'm in school mode and my wife's in school mode, but we're still working. No, no, I, I get and you. And I, I get where, this, I get totally where that struggle is. I, I mean, I'm, I, I've already nominated myself down here. We have the golden apples for teachers. Right. I, I am putting a nomination in for the work I've done. <laughs> I've mastered. We've, we've moved to a four-day school week. I kill. Uh, I have everything done by Thursday. Uh, I'm I'm changing the way school's done, Seth. But now I want to ask you a serious question because no, sure. we think that the last 24 hours in the sports world has been significant. NASCAR announced that they're going to race. We've already had golf coming back. We've had yep. university presidents from Brown to Purdue to Oregon say they're going to have kids on campus. Um, Seth, it looked like yesterday was a really good day for sports going forward. But I'm in an area where we open the beaches back up. It's very different than I where saw, you are. Oh, oh, we saw. We, we watch it. We watch it and, online. Go ahead. And, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm not going to get in that. I, I'll do that at another time on another show. We can have that debate anytime. But my question to you is, Seth, do you, did you feel like yesterday was a significant day for sports moving forward? Or because of mm. where you are, 
you can't even look at what the sports world talked about realistically yet. No, I saw the stories. I thought the most significant story yesterday was the Super Bowl is it can be moved. Uh, when they announced that the Super Bowl could be played on February 28th, and in reality, if it could be moved to February 28th, it could be moved to March. And what I, that gives me a significant hope that the NFL will have a complete 16-game season. I just I like the rhetoric coming from there. Um, the nonsense with the gyms, with the NBA, is – Literally just the stupidest thing I've heard, because what they're doing is literally just trying to placate these players. And I, bl- I don't blame the players, I understand, but it goes against everything that we're being taught here. Because I'd like to go to the gym, too. <laughs> you know, I- I'd love to go to the gym. I'd love to listen to a podcast. I'd love to do a lot of things that I don't normally do. And it's- it- that's part of it. The stuff with NASCAR I get because I think there's a method in which you can have a NASCAR race and still maintain social distancing to a degree. Uh, but I don't know if you saw the funeral in Brooklyn for, uh, I guess, a rabbi or something, and there were like 300 people not, not honoring uh, social distancing, and they were all hugging and crying and doing all these things, and they showed the footage of it, and people were dumbfounded. De, de Blasio came out and just said, you realize that by honoring the dead that way, more of you are going to die. And that's a fact, because they were all older people. And that's crazy. That, that, that logic is absolutely nuts. And I understand people are getting really tired of the quarantine. I am tired of it, too. But the reality of it is, is I don't want to relapse. And I don't want more people to have to lose their life just because we want to get going with our lives. And I just I think it's, it's positive in that we're talking about sports and we're getting there. I still think for baseball it's way too soon. I think for basketball that season has over. NHL is in a real precarious situation. And the thing I took the most positive was was the NFL. Well, what I found interesting about both the NBA and, and particularly the NHL, the word that they've leaked out this week is that both want to resume their regular seasons. And one, I think they're both mistaken. I think they should just, if they come back, go straight to the playoffs. But the other thing is, is that that implies they're coming back sooner than later because you need, obviously, mm-hmm. more time if you're going to play regular season games. Never Because if you're going to play regular season games, then you're probably thinking we're not going to shorten the playoffs, and the playoffs in both sports take roughly two months. Two months, uh, yeah. Baseball, quickly... The Arizona, yep. Texas, Florida. We got five dome stadiums. I mean, six if you want to move games to San Antonio. The stadium has never really been used for baseball, but it is a dome. I mean, do you think? Oh, I hadn't thought of that. That's a that, that's not fair. Do you think that that has some you know merit to it? I mean, in theory, if you could find, I mean, there's a part of me, Seth, that wonders: could you play in five domes and in the old Arlington Stadium, which is still there? I mean, they, they did knock yeah, it but down. Yeah, then it's Texas in the summer. Yeah, I know. But degrees. but. You know, that's five domes that could go to San Antonio and make six. I mean, now, in theory, you could move every division. You could just say, here, here's your stadium. I mean, could, you could put the AL East at the top, couldn't you? Well, the way they're talking about is having three 10-team divisions. Yes. And a Florida, a Texas, and a, and a, uh, a you know, an Arizona, I guess you call it, or Cactus. Uh, the way The way they're talking about it. Again, it, to me, it's just about testing. It's just about getting, making sure you can police a quarantine. You know, it's all stuff that we've gone over. And I don't think at this stage we're ready for that. Um, do I think that maybe we're getting there? I'd like to think so. I, I'd like to think so. They're, the numbers are starting to trend downward, which is a good thing. But it's because of the, the after effects of everything that's gone on up here, which is no one's going anywhere. And... I think the big thing that you have to look at, at least from my standpoint, is when is it going to be possible that we have so many tests that we can test the thousand people that it would re- require to get baseball going? Like, how do you, you know, forget the, 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 the players. Like, there's 750 players if there's active 25 man rosters. I guess I have to change that number because there's 26 man rosters now. And this argument from. My standpoint is all the officials and all the other people, they all have to get tested also. 
And do we have enough tests? And if you ask Governor Murphy here in New Jersey, he'd say, hell no. And if you said to him, could you give me 100 tests? If every state gave me 100 tests and I could get sports going, he'd say, absolutely not. Because older people need those tests. They need that stuff. And those medical supplies are all for people who are, have their lives depending on it, and baseball players aren't. And the probability of a baseball player contracting the virus and getting really, really sick is very minimal. So I understand there's minimal risk there, but you'd have to test those guys because you'd have to know who's infected so you can prevent the spread. And then what happens to these players who want to go home to their families? What happens to the ones who go home to their families and their families go out or their families don't respect social distancing and they have uh, a plumber come over and the next thing you know, now they're contracted and then they're spreading it. It's constant and we're not in a position to have it down yet. And that, in, that's the question for the sports leagues, for the colleges, as they've already said, they're not doing anything until they come back. But some campuses are talking well, I about... I want to ask you guys about that. Yeah. Well, some comments are coming back. I didn't mean to cut you no, off. my my biggest question. I'll, I'll ask you the same thing I've asked everybody about this, Seth, because you're right in the middle of it. The Big Ten says we're playing football. Rutgers. Uh, Rutgers so says. We're on the same page. Rutgers says. Um, yeah, we can't have. I mean, 13 Big Ten schools say we're bringing everybody back, and New Jersey says we cannot because it is far worse in New Jersey and in New York than it is anywhere in the country. We know sure. that. So Jersey says okay. no. What the hell does the Big Ten do then? The big t- that that's what I hadn't done. I what I, my suggestion is, uh, you know, if the SEC says we're going and we're opening campuses, um, that's that's one thing. I don't think the ACC can. I don't think the Big Ten can. Um, and there's uh, there's others. You know, I, I haven't gone conference by conference. Will the NCAA go forward this season with half their teams? And I'm fine with that if that's the way you go. If we're, we're the three of us are in agreement that you cannot put student athletes at risk if you have deemed your campus is unsafe for students. Correct. Yes. If you're not having students on campus, you can't have student athletes. Correct. So that's 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 one rule. I don't think we we had our meeting Friday, uh, and I, I, this is not breaking news. So, but it wasn't really a public meeting about because I teach that uh, podcasting class at Syracuse in the fall. And they said, we have three contingencies. You know, scenario A, we start on time. Scenario B, we are delayed. We start online, but we get to campus at some point during the semester. And scenario three is you're entirely online. And you, as a teacher, have to be prepared for all three. And I took that, and all I said, and you guys tell me if you disagree, if my student is a sophomore, if my child is a sophomore at any four-year school that is considering that scenario, I'm withdrawing for the year. I'm not paying that kind of money for online school. Now, I don't blame them for doing this past semester because that was a knee-jerk reaction and they had no choice because you had already started the semester. But if I'm a, if I'm a parent and my school might be online, I will take, withdraw for the year, take uh, online, you know, go to the University of Phoenix and take some online basic requirement classes, so do the credits transfer, and stay home and come back next year and graduate when you're 23. Right. And Seth- that's, the, that's the conversation we're having. And it's so amazing that like you guys are having a conversation of what does the Big Ten do if 12 well, but, out of 13 schools well, want to go? We, but it's we just, actually. It's amazing how we're different. But, well, but in a way, we're not. Because what we have come to the conclusion of is what you're just wrestling with. That because the money is tied up in getting the kids on campus, and this is all about money, at the end of the day, we're going to talk and say it's about public safety. It's not. This is about money. It's about money. It's about money. It's about money for the universities. It's about money for the athletic departments. And the only way that both of them make their money the university's got to get the kids on campus. That allows you to then play sports. And then we wrestle with how many people we're going to let to see watch the sports. So the first part of the right, equation. As long as they get the CBS money, they don't care about fans. Well, this that's that's actually wrong. Fans. That's actually wrong, Seth. They do. It's, an, it, it's the one business that needs fans. See, the NFL can operate without fans, Seth. 
Every time the Florida Gators play a home game, it's six million dollars in the account. Six million times so, seven so what games. Do they make That's per game. what do they make per game for television? They right? don't make that. They don't make. They that. don't. They do not make that, Seth. That's over. They they make about a hundred million in a year total, and half of it's from the gate from football. It is the most important revenue because Seth, it's not just tickets. So would you These not, people, would hang you on, Seth. Play, it's not just. Would you not play if you if you in, in, without fans? If if I told you SEC could play no fans, you'd say no, no play. I wouldn't play. I would. I would not. Wow. I would, but and be, because I'd rather have the forty million dollar economic hit than the eighty million dollar economic hit, but. It's a huge deal huh. in college football to not have fans. Yeah. It's a much bigger part of the equation than it is if the NFL doesn't have fans. Because the NFL, and, each and team gets that. far more money from their contracts than each college team does. Answer the, this question came up on our Twitch show. By the way, all you folks, we have a Twitch show. Tom Thomas and I, one to three, uh, on our channel. And 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 when he's not teaching homeschool, he's going to go uh, host that channel, host that show right on our channel. Um, the is there an SEC school? And I didn't have an example of this, but is there an SEC school that if you wiped out the college football season, that school is in danger of filing for bankruptcy and going under? Well. Shutting its doors permanently. Uh, I, I'll say this: Louisiana has had a lot of money problems in recent years, and yeah. LSU's football program is eighty-five plus percent of the athletic department. And considering LSU, the and, and it, you know, depending on the school, like Alabama's got a three-phase stadium project that's in the works right now. They're dependent on all this money. File for bankruptcy is a little too severe for a university standpoint. But you could make right. the case in a business sense that athletic departments would be bankrupt if they don't play football. And if and if if you're talking about LSU and the idea that Fauci says, let's just say for the sake of the argument, Fauci says. Kids can go on campus, but they can't have roommates. They have to practice social distancing, and the classes, they have to be six feet apart, and all those things. And, yes, you can play football, but it has to be supervised and quarantined. Um, if you said all that, because like, all that's realistic, but fans can't come to stadiums, you're saying the SEC would say no games? I, I don't know what the I'm SEC sure. would say. I'm, but, I'm but saying Seth, the SEC would say, thank you, Dr. Fauci. We'll take that under recommendation. And then they would go play football with fans in the that, that's what That's what I think. Available here, go online. <laughs> that's, that's what I think would happen also. And the, wow. the funny thing is, is that, Seth, what you just said, to me, all of it's plausible except for if those are the recommendations, you can't play football. If you're letting everybody back in on campus, but you have to have social distancing, you can't have two linemen line up next to one another ball. and spit on each other That's for three Tom's hours. Point. Right. I mean, but that, that point is saying this is because he's an AAU coach, and he literally his players are itching to play, and all he keeps saying is he says if this he goes this is not under control enough, and there's too many restrictions to do it properly. And he, he's right. And he, he thinks, like, he thinks all these plans are stupid because he thinks it's all premature. He also had open heart surgery. Remember, you know, Atan Thomas, during his NBA career, had open heart surgery. And he has zero immune system. And he has not left his house since the Syracuse, North Carolina game, not in the ACC tournament, at the Dome when they retired John Wallace's number on uh, February 29th. He got home March 2nd and has not left his home since for anything. He's gone to his backyard. That's it. And that's, He's in Maryland. And that's the part of this. And, and, and you, you describe the big thing there, though. There's a pre-existing condition. And that's a right. totally separate issue from the rest of the right. population. I mean, that, that has to be Correct. established first and foremost. Correct. Right, but how many people will be honest well, exactly. and truthful about that? I mean, it's it's unpoliceable. It's complicated. That, that there's no the doubt about it. And and outside of staying home, there's going to be risk. We believe because of all the money that is involved, not just in sports, but for the universities as a whole, that they are going to put people back on campus and they are going to put people back in the stadiums. 
and they are going to go to school, and they are going to play. Seth, 30 seconds. In some, in some areas. In, in some, some areas. No, no, no. I think in every place but the Northeast. And and only in certain areas of the Northeast, because we've already had the president of Maybe Brown University say that they're planning on everything being, you know, quote unquote, normal come August. But Seth, we're pressed for time quickly. Sports with Friends Hall of Justice. Uh, Gary Green is the owner of three minor league teams. We talk about the impact of this on the minor league situation. Uh, fascinating conversation about how that industry and how baseball was trying to contract 40 teams before the coronavirus and how they're going to use the coronavirus as an excuse to wipe out even more teams. And then on the Hall of Justice, let's just not kid ourselves, Kevin Smith. Uh, Kevin Smith, the filmmaker, the one of the original podcasters, uh, 3.1 million Twitter followers. He is literally uh, one of my favorite interviews, and this could break my records for Hall of Justice. Kevin Smith comes out tomorrow. Awesome. Can't wait to hear it. One of my favorites as well. Seth? Be well. We'll talk uh, Thursday, uh, Wednesday, 830. You can set your clock by it. Set the clock. It's just Wednesday. Okay, what do I do on Wednesdays? Okay, see you guys later, guys. Seth Everett. Follow him on Twitter at Seth underscore Everett.